Right. So just a few things to cover today. Um, I'm thinking I might as well just start. I was actually going to start on on um, on a question, but I think I might just start on the pressing issue, really, which is uh, FOMC, and that's just really been released. And um, before I started recording, I was just saying uh, thank you to Lawrence for this, really, the um, uh, the analysis. So the dot plot uh, for September uh, 2021 meeting uh, shows that the Fed, zero Fed officials see um, hikes in 2021 versus zero in the June meeting. So they're comparing this meeting to June's as a measure of um, how hawkish or dovish um, the Fed members are when it comes to uh, potential rate hikes, yeah? So they've increased, uh, well, uh, in this meeting, nine Fed officials see hikes compared to seven in the June meeting. So two more would see hikes in 2022. That's hawkish. And 17 Fed officials in this meeting, today's meeting, saw hikes in 2023 versus 13. So again, another hawkish move right so there's there's more expectation and remember these are the smartest guys in the room regardless of whether they do it or not i have to emphasize this point whether they actually raise rates or not because no one can predict the future and when i say predict the future i'm talking about data right and the unforeseen um what's going to happen potentially with you know inflation or global growth etc nobody knows but they just basically looking at all the data they have, right? And they're saying, okay, right now, we even with everything we've assessed, we still think that potentially there could be, um, you know, more rate hikes, yeah? So it's, again, by the rumor. This is what we have to do as traders, right? Forget what the price is doing in the short term, in a sense that not necessarily forget what it what it's doing, but don't be driven by what price is doing in uh, the short term. Yeah, because what happens is in the short term, as we know, is that you will have um, uh, uh, it's 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 a combination of, of of liquidity, right? It's liquidity hunting. That's uh, that's really kind of going on here, and you can see it. See this, uh, you know, I've seen this a, a thousand times almost, right? Where you get the move down, right? Draws traders in the the, the hawkish traders, and they they wasn't wrong for going short, right? It wasn't wrong for 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 interpreting that, or the algos weren't weren't wrong. But what it does is it causes traders to FOMO. At some point, that was a very bearish, a very bearish price action, and all of a sudden. It captures them, and if you go down to probably even the five minute, for example, as in you know an outside candle, capture pain candle, we know that was literally you know bearish. It takes them all out. They have tight stops, takes them all out, right? All the stops were above this level and probably above another level here. You know, there's definitely stops above there. What does it do? Takes them all out as well, right? So all the stops, all the money that was resting above, <laughs> right, took all those out. Because the expectation is what if everyone everyone can everyone can read this right? Everyone is reading this statement here. Fed will you know Fed signals it's tapering soon. Everybody's going what? Everyone's going short. <laughs> yeah, everyone's going short. But the liquidity is not there. The liquidity was all the way above, so it's just literally taken out. You know, everyone above. And by the way, I'm not saying that it's going to start to fall like a stone now. Nobody knows, right? The liquidity hunting process can last for a day or two it could go higher from here the point i'm trying to make is is this is that the setup whatever the setup is whether it was a stop hunt right whether you had that as a stop hunt or whether you're looking at higher you know zones to try and get short at yeah the direction of travel for now or well, for the for over the medium to long term is to the downside if it pulls back into a zone or, you know, a, a local zone, um, whether it's some sort of uh, intraday CPR or intraday um, uh, stop hunt, you know, the, the path over the medium term, at least from now until, you know, the new year, because we're already pretty much end of September into October, you know, maybe another two or two and a half trading months um, is going to be to the downside, right? That's the, that's the, post, that's the, 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 uh, the, the, the most likely scenario. Yeah. Is everyone is everyone following right now? 
Is everyone, is everyone following? Uh, Mr. Diligent says too risky trading on the news. Yeah, I, I tend to not. Um, I tend to not. Uh, you know, trade. Uh, the news you guys you know have been with me for a while I haven't traded the news for ages unless it's unless it's a literally a, a total um uh, uh like miss a total shock to the market and then even then I'm kind of a bit hesitant and because I, I can just wait for a CPR right if the market's been wrong footed then you can guarantee that I'll say guarantee but you know the, the the price when prices come back to that area so what I mean by that is this right is let's go down to a lower time frame. Let's say, for example, and I'll get rid of all of this. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, the market has been, um, the, the market expected, for example, a rate uh, hike for, from the US dollar, yeah? So they expect, um, or actually I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it the other way, right? Because it just makes it easier. So, so let's say, for example, the they they the, the market expected a rate cut from the euro. Yeah. So if they expect a rate cut from the euro, which way should the euro dollar go? Up or down? If the market expects a rate cut, yeah, which way should the market which should which way should the price go? Up or down? Down, says Drake. Down, says Eric, absolutely, right? This is what's supposed to happen. So the expectation is for the market to go down. But let's say, right, the market is totally wrong-footed and you start to see price, I mean, and, 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 and the European Central Bank say they're going to high rates, yeah? So what, what should happen then is you should see something like that, yeah? But even if prices start to go, you know, higher and higher and higher and higher, right? Don't feel, don't feel FOMO, right? Don't feel FOMO because the market, right? The big traders have been wrong footed, yeah? And they have to be able to get back in and they're not going to buy at these prices here. They're not going to buy at that, yeah? Prices eventually will always drift down or drift down to an area where they can, you know, they've been captured in their position because they expected this to happen, yeah? They've been wrong footed. And eventually they can, because obviously they're going to have to, you know, loss aversion bias, they're moving, removing their stop losses, their positioning is all, you know, is upside down. They have to get, they'll probably hedge, make some money on the, to the downside. And then what they'll do is when prices come back down to an area where they can get some relief, because this is where the pain would be, relief, that's where it will happen. So I don't ever really ever really um you know it's 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 been a, a long time since i've really kind of traded the news as far as you know buy press bought buy or sell actually on the news i tend to wait for the news to come out yeah and then if it wrong foots the market brilliant if it doesn't if it's con a continuation then still brilliant because there's always going to be pullbacks to levels that i can get short at yeah days of trading the news is uh pressing buy and sell at the, at the particular moment is is definitely a uh, uh long uh long gone but um does everyone understand that though everyone everyone get that yeah or and, and I, should, I should i should say if anyone does anyone not get that then does anyone want me, want me to repeat that anybody want me to repeat that no 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 okay brilliant all right then. So, um, so at the moment, it's all about the dollar. You know, hawkish. You know, dollar. Right. Don't be surprised again. Do not be surprised if we see prices again start to drift higher. You know, above that area, and then maybe start to, you know, uh, roll over. Because again, none of us know. If there's not enough liquidity. You have to understand this. Yeah. If there's not enough buy orders to facilitate the amount of selling that needs to take place for prices to go down, then the market will look for the buy orders above the market. So there needs to be enough buy orders for the traders to go short. And if there's not enough buy orders below the market, then they have to look for the buy orders above the market. And if you go short, if you if you press sell, if you press sell right now on your broker, 
your stop loss is a buy order. So it, the, the market needs to look for these buy orders for the liquidity. Yeah. So just remember that. So nobody knows, nobody has a clue how much buy orders there are below the market. And if there's more buy orders above the market in the short term, that's where the market is going to look for the liquidity. That's it. Yeah. And just understand that nobody has a crystal ball. But if it continues to fall, then brilliant. Just wait for, you know, pullbacks to uh, to levels. In fact, I probably like this. If you were if you're trading, if you're if you are trading any um of, of the lower time frames, then I would say that this actually is a really, really nice CPR. Right? Textbook CPR, if, if anything. That area there. Why is that? Because you've got definitely got on a 15 minute chart, right? 15 minutes, you've definitely got breakout traders getting involved. How many, how many of you, right, who trade the news, who used to trade the news would have taken that? Oh, sugar. Yeah, sorry. How many of you um, would have taken that large candle? Yep. <laughs> Lawrence says, me. Yep, everybody would, right? There's not a trader in here who would not have taken that, you know, before before you knew what, you know, the fundamentals were and, and how to kind of trade the fundamentals, right? You would have been driven by that price action. That is probably the, mo the most bullish price action, the most bullish engulfing candle, capture pain candle you can possibly see. It's engulfed how many candles? It's literally engulfed like the whole day, the whole previous week you know what i mean all right and go after all the candles yeah very bullish candle and then all of a sudden what do we get we get uh where am i now i'm supposed to where's my fast forward oh sorry guys i've lost my um i've lost my uh oh here it is sorry yeah and now all of a sudden you find yourself underwater, right? So you've got involved here, you've entered a trade here, you've now been caught in your position thinking that prices were gonna go higher, and now you find yourself in problems. So if you get a pullback around here, I think that is that is literally textbook on a lower time frame. And especially if you look at that, maybe on a five minute, you can see the retracement traders getting involved here, even more detail, right? So these guys, you can see off the underside of that level, you can see where it goes higher starts to go higher again and then the collapse yeah so anything to the underside of this level here these guys are losing money they're drowning now they're drowning so if they you're seeing it literally live yeah these guys if they haven't been stuck they got long and they haven't been stopped out right haven't been stopped out here and they're hoping and praying they're moving their stop losses moving it they're like no 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 I don't want to take that. I'm going to move it here. How many of us did used to do that? Looking at our brokers. Yeah. How many of this it reminds you of what you used to do, right? No, no, no. My stop loss is going to go here now. And then the further it goes to the downside. Yep. That's exactly it, Juju. Laugh out loud because we've all done it. I've done it many times in my early days, right? Stop loss is there. It originally was here right underneath that tight stop now all of a sudden it's down here and now all of a sudden if it's if price starts to come down it's going to be down here what are you begging what are you praying happens that prices do what comes back to at least you know somewhere close to where you entered which would have been what right here in it where your entry was there right and then if you went short or if you went long, I should say, right, based on that engulfing candle, whatever it is, if you bought, what do you have to do to exit? You have to sell to exit, right? You're going to sell to exit, that's supply, yeah? Other traders who were looking at this area here, underside of that um, support and resistance zone, right? You've got a level of resistance, bit of resistance here. They're going to start to look to do what? Sell as well. Right, so you've got more selling than buying going on, and anyone who's who managed to bloody pick the bottom here, 
is going to take profit where at an area where they think it might reverse because it reversed here, right? Strong rejection there. So they're going to look to do what? Sell. So the question is always, 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 you're seeing this play out live right now. Question is, is why is there going to be more buy, buy orders and sell orders? Why? Why should there be? The only reason why there ever will be, yeah, is if there's not enough liquidity for prices to go down and there's still lots of buy orders even above that market structure. And the market will hunt for that before rolling over fundamentally. Because like I said, in the short term, price action is random. This is what showing, this is showing you how random price is, right? But in the medium to long term, understanding the fundamental analysis and why we should be getting short. And remember, by the way, yeah, I called this, called this before, before we even saw this. Yeah. So in fact, when I read this, just to show you quickly, Lawrence posted this at 1910, yeah? 1910, right there. And at 1912, I said, that's hawkish dollar. Yeah, 1912. Hawkish dollar. So sell the, sell the euro and buy the dollar, right? That would have been right here. Yeah, so 1910, so pretty much right at these highs. Yeah, right at these highs. There, 1910, 1912, I would have been saying short dollar. Well, I said, I said short, well, I, said, I said hawkish dollar. Whereas everybody else, and these retracement traders were doing what? Going long, I mean, so short, sorry, it's not short dollar. I was saying buy dollar, short euro, yeah? Hawkish dollar, which is buy the dollar, which is basically go short. Whereas, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes later, traders were still these technical analysis traders who don't understand fundamental analysis and what's the bigger picture, right? Are still going long here and now they're caught in their positions. Yeah. More, Lawrence says, yeah, margin call time. That's exactly it. Margin call. Yeah. They're getting caught. And this is what's happened. See, and it's e it's simple to understand. The frustration, I think, well, actually, I know is, is we know the direction. We know the direction of travel. It's just really just a timing issue, right? So timing as far as no one really knows, you know, when prices are gonna, you know, are gonna turn around. That's the reason why we, you know, manage our risk reward. Yeah, you know, and we just enter where we enter, place our stop loss, and we just get in and we just, you know, just take the trades, right? And take the setups. That's all we can do. But the time, timing is just is just the issue that all traders face. Nobody knows. Otherwise, if I if I knew for you know 100 percent that this was going to turn around here, even though yes, I know I said I said short dollar, but I don't know whether it's going to turn around here, whether it's going to turn around, you know, at the at the absolute highs. Nobody knows. But the point is, I know that I know eventually it's going to go to the downside. Or the likelihood, anyway. The likelihood probabilities are in my favor that it's going to go to the downside. So that's the power of fundamentals. But yeah, pretty much I think that's self-explanatory. Any uh any any trades, um, you know, long, I think long dollar now, really, for at least the next month. Of course, you have to or two, but you have to, have to, have to, the data has to support the narrative, guys. Every time you get, and it's funny because it's not so funny, but there is, there is, um, there is a, an article that came out that I did want to show. Oh, I'm going to talk about this as well. So this is talking about data support and supporting the narrative, right? So remember that if data, if the data doesn't support the narrative, then there is, can anyone basically uh, uh, say what this is called? There's a, there's a term for growth down, inflation up. What does that? What, what's the what's the term uh, for that? The technical term. If you get high inflation and you get low growth, Lawrence says stagflation. Exactly, Mister Diligent builds exactly stagflation. Stagflation potentially could be a problem. That's why you need you need GDP. Yeah, you need that GDP quarter on quarter and annualized. To, to continue to rise if inflation is also 
you know, rising and also as well. Uh, this is this is really important. So let me just zoom in a little bit. Again, this just, you know, uh, uh, hammers on the point, really, which is um, a 2023 move. So faster growth and inflation make a rate hike more likely in future years. Self-explanatory, right? It's not it's not Leon Rowe saying this. It's not some, you know, I'm just not just making this all up. This is this is the rules to the game. This is the rules to the game. Yeah. Faster growth. So if growth, GDP and inflation, right? Make a rate hike more likely, which means that we know we know where inflation is right now. We just need faster growth. And that makes a rate hike more likely. So if you do start to see GDP or, or measures of GDP, especially, you know, employment and unemployment um, start to, you know, disappoint, then that is going to make a rate hike less likely because jobs are a strong indication of growth. And if you have high unemployment or low employment or there's stalling in that in that area, then in general GDP, then you can make the, um, you know, the, the, the necessary adjustments. But remember the, remember, the point is, guys, we're trading the rumour. And as long as the data supports the rumour and supports the narrative, it's just literally one way, right? Just buy, buy on the on the dips. You know your your, your trade setups, your, your stop hunts, your CPRs, your daily demand zone. You know trade setups should only be really you know one way. Yeah, should only be one way. So with that being said, um, thanks again to Lawrence for this. This is really, really helpful, Lawrence. Really, really helpful. Thank you for that. Um, so I will then talk about um, main fundamental themes, just briefly touch on this.